to Newlands, another glorious day. Sunshine it is indeed in uh, Cape Town after all the rains and the winds that we had. That has really curtailed cricket being played. But uh, today it's a glorious day. Well, it's an important game. Indeed it is between Western Province, the World Sports Betting Western Province and the Hollywood Bets Dolphins. And both will be seeking victory here today. Western Province, who uh, hasn't uh, set the world alight the last couple of games. They've been uh, abysmal to say the least and they really have to lift the game. And the Dolphins, who uh, are seeking victory here to actually move past Western Province up the log. So the loggers, uh, the Warriors are firmly entrenched at the top of the log with 35 points and the Lions in second place. But a couple of games taking place with me, my co-commentator, Vincent Barnes. Good afternoon to you. Good to uh, be with you again. Good afternoon, Jeremy. And yeah, and good, good afternoon, listeners. Um, I mean, viewers, sorry. Yeah, a beautiful day. Um, two beautiful days, in fact. I think the, besides the cricket today, we had this wonderful weather for the, for the Two Oceans Marathon, which was mm. run yesterday and today. So, yeah, a bit of a change from the, the last couple of weeks with the, the wind and the, the rain. So... Uh, so yeah, it's a very, very, as you mentioned, a very important game for, in fact, every game is now important, especially for Western uh, World Sports Betting, Western Province. Um, and there's three other games around the country, so it's all going to be very, very important. So yeah, I'm looking, looking forward to this game. You know, the two umpires are striding to the middle, and uh, Andre uh, Ulefi, he's uh, Debut, uh, making his debut today, and so and I think the other umpire, if I'm not mistaken, is Bongani Jele. I can see here from the distance, but uh, we'll soon know. Yeah, Andre Willifi, he'll be nervous as heck as well. I think so. All the players will be nervous. The Western Province have uh, won the toss and have elected to bat, and it looks a good wicket. You've been out in the middle, and uh, it does look a good wicket. Yes, it does. Um, it's a little bit of a win, a little bit of a win to try it out a bit, but. Um but I think the right thing to do is to go and bat and get a, get a total out there. Probably could slow down later on. Um, but it looked a very, very good deck. And um, hopefully we can get some big runs there. Now the opening game of this tournament um, saw Western Province uh, take on the Dolphins. That was in Durban and Western Province victorious by two runs. What a pulsating game. It was 148 for 8, which Western Province got batting first at Kingsmead and then restricting the Dolphins to 146 for seven, thus winning by two runs. That was so exciting. Uh, the young uh, Mapungwana getting two for 22. Carl Simmons weighing in with two for 18 as well. And uh, Matikwena Nabe getting uh, two wickets as well. So Western Province were well on their way there. And uh, as I said, a nail biting. So today they'll have their work cut up. They'll have to get a good score on the board. It's a good wicket. As we said, the weather is fantastic. The outfield looks immaculate. So uh, winning the toss first and deciding to bat, you've got to put a formidable total. And anything less than, uh, to me, 150, 160 on this wicket, um, I think the team uh, then will feel that uh, that wasn't sufficient. And more than that would be a bonus. Eddie Moore facing with uh, Ethan Bosch from the Calvin Grove end. The big plus for Western Province is that Tony De Zorzi back is in scintillating form and he's just been outstanding. And how they need him at the top of the order. That'll be wider. Not the way you want to start as a bowler. And the first run comes via a wide for Western Province. Yeah, both teams have been hit by injuries. Um, Bryce Parsons probably having the season of his life. You know, picked up an, an injury, an ankle injury a few a couple of weeks, a couple of games ago and um, yeah, he's missed. Um, with him and John, John Smuts, you know, they've been quite explosive at the top. And uh, so, yeah, he's... And then Wayne Parnell's not playing. Um, he hasn't played for the past couple of games. He's got a kill his, kill his tendon strain. And it's good to see Ethan Bosch back. I mean, yeah. he's, he's <laughs> he basically won the game alone last week. <laughs> and they were in trouble with the bat, and he got some runs and um, with Marcus Ackerman and, and won the game, I think it was against Northwest. Northwest it was, indeed. Now Bryce Parson is the second in the batting averages, just uh, below uh, Herman from the Dragons. He's uh, scored his runs at an average of 47, Bryce Parsons, and what a season he's had. Wide again it will be. Yeah, he's had a great season. Um, played a fantastic knock in, in a shortened game at, uh, against mm. Titans. I think he got 100 in that game. Mm. Um, played really, really well. Um, always showed that promise from a young age. You know, captain of South Africa in 
since after the World Cup. Uh, they woke up they was held here in 2020. Um, so he's a good player and he's obviously been missed here. But good, good that they've got Ethan Bosch back and they've got a good, they really got a good attack here. Yeah, indeed. That's cut away. That should be four. The first boundary of the day it was short with Offit and it got the necessary treatment. And the one thing you cannot do at Newlands is give width. Not in the power play. Yeah, quite interesting. Um, what new Bartman's not playing? What new? Yeah, he's been replaced by. They brought in Darren to Babylon, obviously. One quality bowler for the next. But what new has obviously been one of the one of the probably one of the best bowlers in the in the country this past this past season. Um, He's, he will be missed in this bowling attack. But there in the Babylon, he brings pace and, and um, a lot of experience to this attack as well. Better delivery. Just from this from this distance, it looks a good deck. <laughs> so yeah. You've got to know your story as a bowler. It just looks like very good deck. And conditions are so great today, Jerry. Absolutely wonderful for cricket. Just hoping that more crowds would come you know, to the grounds to watch the games. The young talent on show is a few international cricketers also on show. Wide again. Uh, Ethan Bosch, uh, in between his uh, beautiful deliveries, he's just been guilty of starting to straight. And the ball just moving down the leg side. An umpire is normally very strict down the left side and uh, Mr. Ulifi on uh, debut has had to show us three wides in this over already. Yeah, interesting that, you know, he's, he's bowled three wides when he was just too straight and a little bit of swing. And as soon as he goes out to Rostam, there's no swing. Three deliveries would probably be great deliveries to right hand. Eh? Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And there was a bit of bounce as well with the swing. Both these batsmen, left handers. Zorzi now facing his first delivery. Moore has taken most of the strike in the first over. So it's a healthy start. Eight runs thus far with one delivery remaining in the over. Tucked around the corner. Leg by signal. So does also is not of the mark yet. Nine without loss. First over done and dusted. Yeah, I was just talking about the crowd. Um, yeah, I just thought there'd be a, a few more people in today, but they're probably all tired from from running this morning and yesterday. <laughs> Although also the doctor um, at the ground here, Toxali, um, he's a doctor today and uh, he ran a 21k this morning. He looks fresher than me though. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. When are we getting on, mate? <laughs> <laughs> and Ayanda, the guy who's been helping us here at, at Western Province, he ran a 56k yesterday. Sure. He, also looks, he also looks better than me. I mean, sorry, fresher than me. Oh, he's also, um, I must admit, I've been impressed yeah. by his strides and uh, how he's moved on from where he was. He hails uh, from Kozulu Natal but also had a stint at the Titans and now back home. And he's bowled fantastically this season. I, I've yeah, really been impressed. Wicket taker. He's taken a, a few wickets. Um, and, and you're right, he's bowled well this year. A good delivery. Good single. Gets the Zorzi off the mark. Shows you, you don't have to come all guns blazing. You've got 10 already from over, which is good. And you're going to look to bat at six and seven. Wait for the bad delivery. And obviously, guys want to take the ascendancy in the power play. But you can also only do as well as what the bowler allows you to do. It's quite interesting because, you know, I watch the game. 
against uh, sorry Western Province game against against uh, Dragons on, on on Friday evening and and you just mentioned it now you know a lot there wasn't a lot of uh, pure cricket shots which could be playing take ones take get twos it was just looking for big the big shots the boundaries um, and and that probably cost him you mm. know the last over I think the 14 of the last over and, and Mangrebol great over to a youngster. But it was all about trying to get as much. I mean, so many. They were looking for boundaries all the time, and, and you just, as you just mentioned, I, you know, some some good quality cricketing shots get you the, the rewards. Especially early on, Vincent, you're starting your innings. You don't know sometimes what the ball is. So take just a couple of balls, get yourself in. You know at the back end of the innings, wickets in hand, and then you get the, the blasters in. <clears throat> That's the way they play the IPL as well. You see the two batsmen walking in. They'll always look to take the on the ascendancy, get off to a good start. In the middle periods, they start running hard. They get six, seven, and over. Bat and then from over 50, they really start. If you've got only two or three wickets down, the big hitters come, and then they really start. And they make up for those overs that, uh, oopsie, wow. that's a magnificent delivery. Yeah, top delivery. He's, like I said, he's bowled well. And, um, you know, he showed from ball one and he just straight on the money. Um, the one thing about, I mean, we'll be playing at the moment. We're in the middle of April. Um, you know, conditions, you know, that's, the squares are starting to look tired. I'm not saying in this, in mm. this case, um, you know, around the country, they've been overused. Yeah. It's been a long, long season, you know, so conditions, although you're the home team, you still got to get a good understanding of what the conditions are like, you know, get a, the pace and the bounce of the wicket um, from a batting and bowling side to get a, you know, get a good idea. And, and yeah, this, is, this has been a great over here from, from, from Kush. Yeah, he's been on the money, on the button. He's really a strong fella. So... Uh uh, so he, he, also supports, he also supports Man City, so he's a great ball, okay, actually. There we go. Well, this morning at, uh, at church, the bishop was talking about Liverpool's 3-0 loss the other day, and I, <laughs> I just sat there and I thought I could, um, I could have a cadenza. <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Prince would have flipped, but that one has tapped around the corner, gone for four. And it's leg buys again. So just straying a little bit there, last ball of his delivery to spoil his over a little bit. But other than that, it's been magnificent bowling from uh, Okush Lechele. Yeah, Liverpool's only got themselves to blame last Sunday as well. I mean, they had ample opportunities to put them to bed, secure that top of the log spot in the English Premier League. And then floundered against uh, Manchester United, as in the previous game. It just doesn't seem... So I thought Mr Klopp would get a nice send-off. He's been a fantastic coach over many years. But uh, that race for the top of that log, Vincent, is widely open. Wide open at the moment. Anyone, Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool can win it. Yeah, no, it's interesting and yeah, it's an interesting and exciting yeah. run in, you know. The one wins the day before and then it puts pressure on the other two and they know they've got to win. And they both all claim they've got to focus only on their own games, but they know they're watching the other games. <laughs> Absolutely. Too. Well, the other thing that's been interesting, I've been, I mean, I spent the last couple of days also sometimes at home watching late into the night. That's why I look so tired watching uh, the, uh, the Masters. I mean, at Augusta, Scheffler doing well there at the moment, but uh, just, just the following of Tiger Woods. I mean, day one. He was minus one going into the hut after the first day. I know he's, a, he's plenty at the moment, but made the cut. And it just shows you when he got onto that first tee, Vinny, just the amount of people, the roar, the applause. And you just looked at, that, at his face and the, it's just unbelievable. Oh, that's gone. It's gone a mile. Out of here. Take that, sports lover. So, well, Brian. Yeah, just gave it a bit of flight and, and bang. Did you watch? Uh, did you watch some of the masters? Yeah, no, I have. I've, I've, 
I've been a keen spectator, <laughs> especially when obviously when Tigers play. So, um. oh wow, that's gone for four as well. Productive over for Western Province. There was a drop catch, wasn't it? Just missed that for a minute. Yeah, it was a drop catch. Indeed a drop chance. So the Dragons and the Titans are also locking horns today. Titans uh, have won the toss and elected to bowl. The Rocks are also in action. They've won the toss and they've elected to field. So lots of cricket. And... Uh, the Dragons winning the toss and, and, and also batting. So, yeah, lots of cricket. And those teams will definitely, you talk about watching each other on the log. I'm sure the golfers do the same with that <laughs> leaderboard. Every whole, every, um, the Shamblo, the first day, he was ahead. He was looking good. And, uh, yeah, the, and the first couple of days was, was very windy. And yeah. It was very difficult, you know, um, especially for you playing late. You know, the wind was pumping um, in, the, in the late afternoon. And um, yeah, it's, it, it, you know, I mean, Tiger making the his 24th consecutive cut was obviously his focus. I, I don't think that he he's obviously come to win. There's no doubt he's, he's coming to win the <laughs> tournament, but you know, he, he can't compete and, and walk 72 holes anymore like he did before. So, you know, and his young players are exceptional. And Vincent also coming into the tournament for for uh, and he hasn't had a lot of practice. I mean, there was one tournament he had to pull out. On the second day, couldn't complete. He, he didn't play a lot of golf. But my goodness, to make the cut, yeah. that number one, I mean, it just says it all to me. Yeah, look, he's, he knows the course. Um, yesterday was, the course is getting more difficult. It's really, the greens are becoming more difficult now. <clears throat> now that it's dried out and got quicker, he didn't putt well yesterday. In fact, he didn't play well yesterday. And be it as it may, they normally say, Augusta get, gets one. On the last nine, on the last day. <laughs> and I was I was watching last night, and the 18th is, is apparently the, the most difficult hole today. So we're going to see that. So yeah. Hopefully, it's, hopefully it's going to be sort of two or three guys going into that last. And the leaderboard has changed quite a bit, though. Yeah. You know. So, but I'm still I still I still believe that uh, Scotty Scheffler is he's probably just too good. Probably the favourite. Yeah. Still the favourite. Yeah, he would be my favourite as well. I really enjoyed the way he's played this weekend. Yeah. yeah the other two guys in contention, Colin Murakawa mm. and, and yeah. Matt Homer, they played well. Very good. Well. So, um, anyway, it's back to the cricket. Yeah, no. And we got four. We got four very interesting games. I mean, they're all impacting on, on one another. Um, but the log positions, I, mm. think, I think the Warriors and Alliance could probably feel that they've, and they've got a game in hand that they could possibly be through. That's uh, heaved away on the onside by De Zorzi. And he just he strikes it so powerfully. What a start, Western Province. They can be happy with themselves thus far. 33 without loss. We into the fourth. Just cleared that foot there and gave himself that room to actually get it through because that delivery wasn't that bad. Goes again, this time airborne. And it will go all the way for four. One, oh no, it's gone all the way for six. I beg your pardon. Wow. Good strike. Dangerous yeah, when he gets going. Yeah, that, that's, that's, in his, that's in his arm. I mean, that's his favorite area. You know, early in the power play, he's always looking to, to score on the onside. And he's just bowled a bit too straight. He's also improved leaps and bounds. I always thought he was a young talent. Besides him playing SA under 19 as well and at school's level, the Zorzi. This one he pulls away. It's gone all the way again. Well, he earned by going to full and then in the arc getting hit over long on. This time he tries to bowl it short and gets pulled away for six. Yeah, I think I said it earlier. It looks like a good deck. Just, just banged it into the deck and uh, set up nicely for, for Tony and that's his favourite area. His favourite area to hit on the onside and his favourite stand. I, I've seen him meet many, many a six over that stand. 
Well, let's hope it doesn't get onto the half past two train then, by the way he's going. It passes on to Cape Town. <laughs> he's also been a very good fly off at school. Um, I'd, I'd seen him play this time was living up in Johannesburg. Went to watch a couple of the kids' games when I stayed at St. Stithian's time and uh, saw him play fly off. Thank you. A number of cricketers that have been that played fly off, and I mean, look over the years: Peter Kirsten, Gavin Cowney, Lee Barnard, Herschel Gibbs. Herschel Gibbs, yeah, who can forget Herschel at Bishop's? I had an under-19 player um, played in my under-19 team, Western Province under-19. Neil de Kock. I mean, he was. Yes, he scrum off. He played scrum off for Western Province. He was a scrum off. He was yeah. scrum off. Sorry, he was scrum off, but he was a, a classy, a classy scrum off. Bold. Bowl that round the wicket to pace off. Now these days you can't play both sport anymore. Well, it's uh, four overs gone, 45 without loss. Good start, Western Province. We're well, going to cricketers also that played fly off in, in, in rugby positions. For Ig Davids, remember him very well, played, and then Fahmi Solomons. Oh yeah, fuck me. Yeah, fly fuck off me, and, and Bennett also played Western Province. Uh, both teams, so uh, yeah, just and they and they all short guys in stature. Yeah, fuck me was a fantastic batsman, um, left hander. You know, played with me with for Western Province, mm -hmm. um, and and obviously a high quality fly off. That's in the air, gone. Well, it just held up in the wicket there, Moore, trying to get on the act. That's the indifference that I, my criticism of Eddie Moore in, in, in this form of cricket. The Zorzi's is going bang to the dozen. He's not the type of player that can get on. Work the ball for one. I would be love to be in the non-strikers end, not out even 10, and the Zorzi is getting under it. Because he's just got that to hit the ball. And I think that's, that's Moore's undoing sometimes in T20 cricket. But first wicket down, Western Province, 45 for one. Yeah, it was done by the pace, um, the lack of it. Uh, slow ball and um, slow ball, and it, it did him comfortably. But you're right, uh, Jerry. It's he does that. He did it in four-day cricket as well. He just he just plays, you know. And um, at, when I watch him on Friday night as well, he, you know, he's just got to relax. I mean, the, mm. the, 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 the you shouldn't be putting so much pressure on yourself as, yeah. a, as a batter um, to, to want to hit the ball. I mean, it's fair enough we understand the power play, but I mean, they're going well in the power play. And yeah, another attacking batsman and a youngster that uh, shows so much promise. Jonathan Bird in. How much did Eddie, who was the guy that caught him in? Sabrian. Sabrian. And how much did he get from balls? Of 14. Thank you. Oh, he's a Bosch. I, I remember he came as a rookie um, when um, young bowler just bowled, didn't get much chance to play in that first Mzanzi League and was there at the Paul Rocks. And one just could see him at the nets running in bowling that uh, there's something here. And their father tragically passed away many years ago. The father of Ethan and Corbin, Tashius Bosch. And also an outstanding cricketer. Oh, this could be trouble. Wow. And he picked up cleanly there. I think that was quite a, a risky run. If they had to pick up and clean and hit, they would have been, that would have been awfully close. You have played against Tashis Bosch after Unity? No. No, no. no, 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 I didn't play against him. Okay. Okay. I mean, finally, the Villiers used to open the bowling at the Titans. That's a good single. Well run. Yeah. Well, got it. You see, that's what happens. It was ricocheted. 
and what should only be one is two. I just think the dolphins a little bit maybe not on the button as sharp as they should be. It's normally they're quite uh, nuggety in the field. But they're just um, showing signs of a little bit of wear. I don't know if it's been a long season. Good hit, but uh, the Zorzi was well home. Nicely played, driven on the offside. A slower delivery, pushed it a bit wider, Ethan Bosch. But just look at the sensibility with which the Zorzi is playing. He's not trying to also heave everything for six. He's, he's measured in his approach. The bad ball has got its punishment. The good ball, he's pushing gaps for one. And that just shows you the mark of a good player. Well, Birch gets a top edge over third man. And uh, third man in the circle. And he's going to get a couple here. Likes to get on with it too, Jonathan Birch. He's an exciting young player. 50 up for Western Province. Bowling change now from the Weinberg end. Vincent has uh, eluded to him. The Pavillon. And he does bowl with a bit of pace. No, Neil Barton on today. But as you said, Darren De Pavillon, one uh, good swap for another. Four for 18, his best figures. That's in Kimberley. 21 22 season. 67 wickets. This opens the blade down to third man. I've always been a fan of, of Darren de Pavlon. Um, had his fair share of injuries. And um, was a fixture in the side earlier mm. in the competition. Um, but it's good to see him back. Yeah, had he not been plagued so much, I think he would have had more opportunities high up. Oh. Nicely driven. Beautiful stroke. Yeah, just overpitched, half volley, deserved the treatment. Stands nice and tall in the crease. Jonathan Bird, it's a mark of authority. Good run. I like it when batsman has the statue-like look at the crease. I mean, it just reminds me of Graham Smith. Batsmen that have presence at the crease. Normally ones that get on with the runs and make runs. If you look sloppy at the crease, you don't survive long. The Zorzi's got that same. His presence here knows what he's about. And you just get the feeling that uh, if you're going to be off target, yeah, they're going to punish you. Oh, this time, he throws it away. The pavilion gets him. Maybe just got on him quicker than what he anticipated. Marcus Ackerman, no fault. The Zorzi gone for 22. And that's what he brings to the game. Um, he's got pace. Um, and that bounce has rushed Tony the Zorzi there. And, um, it's a pity because um, Tony looked in great touch. And, like I said, that's what Darren the Pavlon brings to the party. He's he's got pace. Yeah, it was on him very, very quickly there. Vincent, one wicket leads to another and suddenly being forty five without loss, fifty seven for two. Yeah, I think this has been the one of the problems for them for the for the World Sports Betting Western Province side for the last few games now. 
you know, they lost wickets in power plays. We lose the wickets in clumps and, uh, and a nice recovery again. Calvert Reynolds should be walking to the wicket when the game is set up nicely and, and now he's got he's to come and play. And they don't bat very deep. They, they, they've lost a few players, especially some of the all-rounders. They've lost um, from, from Guana, Guana yeah. and, and Wayne Pernal's not playing either, so they've lost a few all-rounders. So they don't bat that deep. Make a very good point and that's the worry about this Western Province team in the competition moving forward is that um, the batting once Verena departs and you've got a young John James at number five and Linda at six they're on it's very brittle so that's why it is so important that players like Moore, De Zorzi, Verena get the bulk of the runs If you're planning and you're a position coach, you will look at this Western Province batting lineup and you'd say to your bowlers, you get through that top three of uh, Verena, De Zorzi, Moore, probably Bird, you know we're in business here. Yeah, and as, I, as I said, you know, they don't bat very deep. Um, we've got a couple of young players, you know, inside John J- James, playing as an all-rounder. Rain off the mark. Yeah, if, if, you know, if I'm a coach of your opposition team, I want to see Jordan Linder to get him to the crease as soon as possible. You know, get my bowlers at him. Um, so that's where they've, they've, they've lost a few of their games with, um, the, with, the, with, the, with losing wickets like they have. You know. Seems like Al Brain has just picked up a bit of a niggle there. It looked like a hamstring. Oh dear, that's the last thing they can afford also. Now another niggle. Oh, bowling from the uh, Carbon Grove in now. John John Smuts. Season Opus, campaigner. Uh, yeah, yeah, I hope it's not too serious though. I mean, it's, uh, could I can't have Carl Verena walking off here too. Well, that will be disastrous for Western Province. And a hamstring can be something that <laughs> just doesn't go away. No, you don't recover overnight. It's, it's, you know, if it is a hamstring, then you could knock him out to the rest of the competition. Yeah, talking about hamstring makes me think of this little story. When I was staying at St. Stithians and also refereeing schoolboy rugby on a Saturday, and uh, it was the, the first game I did was an under-15 game, and the guy intercepted the ball, so I had to turn around in mid in midway and and follow the the wing, and I just had snap, hamstring gone. I was on the physio table for about seven, eight weeks, oh and uh, yeah, got back. John John Smuts got back next game under 19 game lovely going first five minutes snap the other hamstring goes oh. gone good night God bless and that was the end of me with the rugby refereeing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was funny I was sore at the time cut away but uh, fielding in the circle that's why you have the men in that 30 meter circle. Nicely driven down the ground. That's what John John Smut after the power play. He's just brought up to bring things up. Under control, he won't mind getting through his overs and he goes for six, seven runs and over. Not if you bowls your four overs and he goes for 28, you a job well done. Now this is what Western Problems got to do. They got to look to score off every ball. 
now that the players are out, there's lots of singles in the circle. Sensible cricket. Now we go from here onwards to about 13, 14 overs at 6, 7 and over. Wickets in hand. And be smart. Seven overs gone now. No, beg your pardon. Nine overs gone. No, it is seven. Beg your pardon. 63 for two. Not a bad run rate, nine and over. Yeah, no, very good. Very good, yeah. And like I said, now, you know, take what you, what you can get, especially, you know, with the field spread now. Um, you know, the singles, like I said, on, on, on Friday, just, just watching the game on Friday, it must have irritated the coach um, watching his, his batters play, just looking for the big, big hits, boundaries. Um, we know the ball flies in the high felt and the way they're playing, you know, it's, it, the way they were playing and is, is almost, let's take on this, let's take on these boundaries and, um, and, that's, and, they, and they lost the game. Andile Semelani, here from the Weinberg end, wasn't he also one of the players of that under-19 group? Absolutely, yeah, he went to the 2022 World Cup in the, in the West Indies, was part of that, that squad. What a place to go and tour. It's quite interesting that he, I mean, he's, he's obviously brought in as an extra all-rounder because I don't see Andili get the choir playing today. Andili played on the other night, mm. so. But he's a good player, he, good young player. This, it's a bowler mile. Decent, he's a decent bowler. Oh, it's an ugly stroke. Yeah, I think that's the... I think South African cricket for a long time has been so blessed with all-rounders. And uh, they're really looking for all-rounders that can come through, that can do the job with both bat and ball. Times we found that for a long period of time, Vincent, all-rounders have just been bits and pieces without being critical. But, I mean, they've not really, in both forms, of struggled of late. And so... Uh, Especially with the World Cup coming up in June, a formidable all-rounder which gives the selectors then choice of either an extra batsman or an extra bowler. Does help in any team. Kyle looks to be more comfortable. <laughs> Does it look like the hamstring is? Uh, doesn't look like it was too serious. Fingers crossed. Got a job to do here for Western Province. Worked again on the onside. Jason Smith doing the fielding. He also hails from uh, this part of the world. Jason Smith. He's, He's also a handy all rounder. Yeah, but, uh, he doesn't bowl anymore. I've, I've noticed that he hasn't bowled in any of these games. I haven't even seen him bowl in the four day stuff, so it's quite interesting. Reluctant bowler. Yeah, yeah. well. I mean, he's useful. Yeah. I mean, to have somebody like him get two overs in there, I mean, that's what he wants. Couldn't agree with you more. I'm just looking at it because they normally play three spinners and they don't have Bryce Parsons. I wonder if Marcus Ackerman will have a, a go with his office. Oh, it's still a long way to go. We're only in the eighth over now. <coughs> Always good to get a bowler in, slipping over or two and not go for many. Scoreboard pressure. 
Eight overs gone, 67 for two. Yeah, but just watch this over that um, ideally bowled in now. You know, it's a, a couple of those balls probably could have been, you know, smacked for four. Or batter could have shown more intent. But because of the game situation, and they, you, you know, you do look at the scoreboard and say, you know, if we, one, of, one of us get out here, you know, we could be in trouble. So, so they pl you play differently. Yeah. And that's how you got to, you know, yeah, I just, I just felt that we, the side was a bit unbalanced today. We needed an extra batter in there. Short pulled away. Bit of work to do for the man on the boundary. And they'll uh, scamper through for two. Yeah, and if you look, even the previous over, when you talk about Simon Yen, he got away, what did he go for? Four in his first over. John John Smart went for five. So two overs gone, only nine runs. Makes a difference. Down the ground. Only a single as well. I wouldn't mind that to Dolphins. It's the boundaries that they uh, would want to stop. This is a very good batting surface. Well, it stopped. Well, give himself the room, Carl Ferreira. Not half a meter left or light, right of uh, Jason Smith that would have gone for four. And, uh, unfortunately, straight to the fielder. Good use of the feet. That's in the gap. They should get to good running. Good cricket all round. In the air. Thrown away once again, Calvarena. Naughty, naughty, naughty. And Western Province lost their third. And that's another wicket for the Hollywood Mets Dolphins. The Western Province captain, Calvarena, he departs for eight. Yeah, I think we just spoke about it earlier. And there we go. Looking for the big, looking for the big boundaries and um, another big wicket gone. Yeah. And it's not like, it's not like, a, for it's, not like a, it's, 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 it's a mistake day. done now and then. This has just been continuous during this competition that Western Province have done this. Yeah, I mean, they started well. I mean, they, uh, I mean, I think they got to... 45. I think, I think they've been on 23 points for a long time now. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, they had a good start and... and now we've got a youngster in and uh, he's a good, good young player. Actually, a good idea this to send him in earlier, John James. Played well the other night. It's, it's good to have the answers in the team and it's opportunity for them. But the senior statesmen, they've got to take the ascendancy and show the youngster, help him. Can't just leave it to a young man who's trying to find his feet. Nice to see young talent, but uh, can't leave it over to him just alone to do the job. How's he going to learn when the experienced players don't show the example? Terrible shot. And you're the captain of the side as well, so even more so. Lots of overs left here. What we're into the almost at the halfway mark. That run rate has come down now. It was healthy. Three wickets down. Pressures mounting on Western Province. So Milani. 
Came from the wine begind. Can you Adam and Eve this? My goodness me! Western province now reeling at 72 for four. Yes. You're right. I, I absolutely can't believe this. Look, I'm, I mean, he was thinking the shot, the shot probably on. But just, I mean, obviously, just rushed him also. That's another him, blow. Hit him high on the bat. The Hollywood Bets Dolphins. Hit him high on the bat and Western straight to the. Western province Jonathan Bird. He could feel for 15 of 13 deliveries. It's a good catch. It's a good catch by Marcus Zackerman. Yeah, no, it can't give it. You know, the fielding side has been magnificent, but this has just been a big, a big to, to say, Vincent. This is just reckless batting. No responsibility. Inept. George Linda in now, number six. Mammoth task on the hands now, Western Province. going through the coach's head in that change room. He must be pulling out his hair. I had a word with him a couple of weeks ago, you know, chatting to him and he was just saying, you know, I'm just so disappointed that our cricket's been up and down. We haven't, and uh, he's absolutely right. And they come out a day again. You can only do so much with coaching staff. You don't play the game for the players. Oh my word, it's gone. Samalani on our trick. Western Province. Staggering! Trouble! My word! I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> this is almost like a village game on a Sunday afternoon south of London. Well, we haven't seen some great cricket. Well, we haven't seen some great batting. We've seen some good bowling. And not very good bowling, but I mean, good bowling and an excellent fielding. But, um, but the batting uh, has been great. Yeah, the batting has actually been, to say the least, pathetic. Going nicely, 45 without loss, now 72 for 5. And it's not as if the bowlers have been like bullets or rockets. It's been bad batting. Irresponsible batting. There, there hasn't been any seam movement. There hasn't been any swing. There hardly any swing. Um, all the bowlers have been doing now has been bowling wicket to wicket. Odd bouncer. And there we go. Really disappointing. Similani on a hat trick now. I put a slip in there. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Held out by Onke Nyako. Wow. Yeah, Newlands has been stunned into silence. This is the last wicket. Let's have a look at that again. Well caught. Down the ground. A better light. Nicely played. And he skipped it on the carpet. Interesting that he came down the track, though, but, um, but yeah, I didn't go across the line. Hit the ball straight down the wicket, it was great. Well, the danger is Western Promise loses today. They've still got uh, one or two more games left and they lose again. They'll be in danger not even to get into the quarterfinals. Now that one's missing. We didn't even make the cut. Yeah, 
Yeah, we've got a big game next week against the Titans. Titans in, in fifth position at the moment, so we're looking to, to win today and put pressure on Western Province. Look, the game's not over. I mean, it's still a lot to play for today, and who knows? I mean, Western Province still win this game, but they're in a, a pretty poor position at the moment after being in such a good position in a power play. That's the sad part, Vincent. Yeah, you, you, you got yourself in a good position. Two openers were going nicely, and then suddenly Moore threw it away, and from there it was just downhill. Look at that scoreboard. And you think to yourself, my goodness. Yeah, disappointing Western Province thus far. Really disappointing their fans. That's probably also maybe part of the reason for the poor attendance and cricket numbers. Normally crowd attendances at Newlands are over the years have been magnificent. Oh, people have um, watching the streaming and they thought let's come to Newlands and watch the cricket watch Western Province if I was driving by and I peeped my head over the fence and saw 77 for five I'd say to my family let's rather go to Seapoint for an ice cream oh dear oh dear has it caught it Another one bites the dust. Oh, this is a comedy of errors. I'm trying to figure out what, what uh, uh, I've watched. Or uh, on, uh, and Yaku come to the to the wicket, and uh, I'm trying to figure out what is. He showed intent earlier. Really. Um, he's just done that again, and then just chipped the ball straight to long. I mean, with the tail this long, you know. I mean, surely you wanna you wanna bat at 20 overs and. At this stage, it doesn't look like they're going to get through that 20 overs. But again, you know, I must take my hats off to Dolphins. They've stuck, they've, they've done everything. It's been a simple game plan. They've got wicket to wicket. Their fielding has been excellent. Bowlers have done what they needed to do. Um, Bowl straight and stumps. And, um, and give away, you know, haven't really given them much to, to score. And um, they've had to create their own scoring opportunities. And unfortunately, you know, lost wickets in the process. But I've, I've got to take my hat to the fielding has been excellent. Yeah, they was another great catch by Ethan Park. Yeah, they have. They started off slow and I just thought that and then suddenly when the wicket fall, that intensity picked up and we've seen some wonderful catches. And as you said, take nothing away from the Dolphins. They've been superb. They've bowled, as you said, wicket to wicket. They've stuck to their guns. They've done the basics of the game properly. Where on the opposite side of Western Province, has done everything wrong according to the game. It's really been poor. Poor effort thus far. 77 for 6. Carl Simmons in with the youngster John James. into the pads on the leg side at yeah, this rate in Western Province if they lose today they will be in grave danger of not making it to the semi-finals they've got two games left after this Vincent and both games are one against the, the Rocks that's on Friday night the Rocks and the Titans yeah so Friday night at uh, at your your other home ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, I know you prefer being at, in Paul than in Cape Town. <laughs> you yeah, got, you've got a bit of history there. I mean, you've got a bit of history. You've, you've been manager and you're quite involved in, 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 yeah, in yeah, pulling pull yeah, setup. So, um, yeah, that's a big game. Yeah, he's a big game. They've also been disappointing this season, I must admit. Oh, that, very uh, disappointing. Uh, yeah. yeah. I must admit that uh, my eyes are always fixed on a. 
growing up Western Province will always be, but I mean, Boerland is also like second home, so you always look at both these sides, Western Province and the GBET Rocks, doing well in all competitions. But uh, both teams, sadly, this season have been poor. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, I mean, if you look at the Rocks itself, uh, I know we're talking about them at the moment, but you know, if you think you, the, would be the first three batters on that score, on that, on that, on that card would be mm. the two Malans and, mm. and, and KP. Um, and they're not playing at the moment. Yeah. They've all three been dropped. Yeah. You know, it tells a story about the way their batting has been this year. Just let them down. I know, absolutely. They have been, and as you said, you take the two Mal brothers. I mean, that's strong batting. KP, KP just, have, just doesn't seem to have uh, done well at all this season after having, I mean, he was first pencil down, number three for South Africa. Now the selectors are, you know, not even having a look because he hasn't scored runs, he's battled. And the other problem is he's now moving on again. I mean, he's been all over South Africa. He's moving on? Yeah, he's going to the Titans next season. Oh, okay. Yeah, signed there. So, when, when, I, 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 I haven't got a problem with players moving. But when you move in such short spells, you've been at the Dolphins, you've been at Bulland before, you've come back here, now you're going to the Titans again. It, I think, uh, yeah, I, th I think he was, he's, he had settled nicely at the Dolphins. He yeah. playing very, very good cricket. And, um, you know, got into the national side because of that. But you're right, I mean, moving around is, doesn't serve a purpose, especially when you're moving around in short. You know, some of the cricketers you're looking at today, you know, Players who were playing here has gone on, went to different parts of the country and then has moved on from there and they're really nowhere at the moment. So, well, who knows? It could be a good move. We, can, we can't say. It could be a good move for him. I didn't know that, so uh, thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for letting me know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look, there's, there's probably going to be a lot of movement again now in the off-season. That happens, I mean, that, that happens every year. You know, it does. You know, players don't play and they haven't played for a while and you know, agents start sniffing around at other provinces and or young players, you know, come through a World Cup and done well and hasn't been contracted and, and he's off somewhere else. And I mean if I look if I look at that that um, the twenty twenty two World Cup, ten players came back from that World Cup and got contracted or were playing first class cricket. You know, which was a, which was good. Um, that's in the air as well. Oh, what a good catch! Another good catch. It's another good catch, though. I mean, it was going over his head, you know, running backwards, and but. Same process, Babo, wicket to wicket. Variation is a banging into the deck. Claims another wicket. Oh, just been a comedy of errors by Western Province. And they're going to be bowled out. With plenty of us to spare here. 80, 81 for 7. Oh, batting into Buren Hendricks and Mione in the 12th over. Wow. Lost for words. I think you might I'd like you to complete your point you were making. You're talking about 10 players contracted. Wow, what a number. No, 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 I'm just, no, no, not all of them were contracted, but all of them came yeah. back. When they came back, they were, they were they sort of channeled into, into uh, a domestic cricket. Um, and some of them obviously were contracted. But it's, I thought at, at that time, I'm still being high performance manager, I felt some of them were being pushed too early, you know, mm. and they were. You know, and um, and I, if I look at some of them today, they're not playing. Yeah, that's you know, sad. I mean, I, I look at you. Got to you got to understand at under 19 level, that level, some of them was 17, 18 years old, and, and you know they got they got to take time to develop. And I watch a number of cricketers come play at Western Province, mm. do well here, and you know and get picked up by you know the the big bucks up up north and. And the cricket don't go anywhere. Uh, that was off his uh, feet. Well, I'm, 
I'm so glad I'm sitting next to pearls of wisdom here next door to me. <laughs> and uh, we sing from the same hymn sheet. I've said it about Mpaka and how I got criticized um, for saying that um, he was giving me the new ball at 17. Oh, the kid is young. He's got a lot to learn. Finish your school. Now he's coming home because he's got to finish his school. But uh, one just wonders how much damage was done in that first game. You bowl to Travis Head international cricket and you came giving a ball to a kid young sensation at under 19 level and he was absolutely outstanding and you say here's the new ball bowl against Travis head on a flat deck when uh, bowlers like uh, <laughs> boomerang these are not even given the new ball I, I i just find it's absolute madness and i stick to my point i know i know i made the i made the mumbai newspaper as well with Clayton Mozzarello writing an article and uh, paces to push a kid. But some of them need to groom and, 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 and find their way to get to international. Yet the time will come. Captain uh, Sir Brian, ball in hand. He must be ecstatic by the way his team's performed thus far. Yeah, that's a good point to make, Jeremy. Um, the, the like I said, I mean, out of 10 players coming back from there, I, I don't think that, you know, all of them were ready to play first-class cricket. It's good that they mm. faltered into the. So that's a success story. You know, they didn't win mm. the World Cup, but it contributed to South African cricket. Um, but some of them, if I'm looking where they are playing today, they're not. They're, they're not even playing. And um, which is which is quite sad. You know, I would have liked to have seen them develop, develop um, you know, through, through the channels and... and and not be thrown into the deep end all the time. And some of them actually playing as a key play in the side now. Mm. You know, um, but look at young Mickey Copeland, who's, who's still at the stage. Another one. Oh, another one bites the dust. Yeah, that Simmons gone, stumped. And now Western Province eight down. Jeremy, at this race, I think we're going to see that 4 o'clock uh, uh, Masters tea of time. Yeah, absolutely. Feet up. Cup of tea. Now, this has been disappointing, Western Province. Unless they also want to watch the Masters. I'm sure the coach must be beside himself with what he's seen. I had a, had a brief chat before the before the game um, with Salih, and, and obviously he's disappointed as to how you know that, that they've been playing that recently. I mean, he agreed with me. I mean, Friday's game was you know he just needed to be to bat to bat sensibly instead of just looking for the big mm. hits all the time and boundaries. Um, John James got them to within 14 runs of the last over. If you just think about it, one yeah. of the more experienced guys at the crease. You know, you probably would have won the game in 19 over already. Wesley Badger, he's the next man in. Known, known for his bowling prowess, has um, been doing well, getting an opportunity, yeah. But, uh, he didn't be thinking that he'd be batting in the 30th over. Thought he'd have feet up and just come running in just now. But Vincent, it just shows you how good the system is. And this is, this is the problem. We look at the provincial cricket. We look how poor it has been here. So all the hard work being done to get these youngsters to that level. And the youngsters then get pushed in here. And then senior players don't show the ascendancy and set the example. And then sometimes a lot of these young players just become a statistic. Never to be heard of again. And that to me is the sad part. Can't be doing yeah, all the work and the pipeline has been so fantastic down the line and then suddenly yeah because you want the young people to kick on you want them to gain the experience yeah look i mean it's it's if you look at okay so the, the captain of the of the 2020 world cup side and the 19 bryce parsons mm. if you look at his career i mean he hasn't played regularly a quality player should be playing regularly um left left the line set up to go to well he wasn't part of the line set but left janice but took a play in in Durban, and and if you look at the cricket he's playing now. He's, he always showed that that potential and that promise. So, 
it is good to see him playing. You know, the young Marcus Ackerman as well. It's all about opportunity. But, but yeah, I mean, we just had two youngsters who's opened the batting for under 19 in this World Cup pass now. And, and they're opening batting for Titans, which is, which is quite interesting. It's exciting, you know, because mm. they, they play with that freedom. And they, but it also, you know, um, they throw the wicket away mm. regularly. And you just need probably one of them to be batting with a, a senior player to get him to walk down a wicket. And, you know, because they face, I mean, they do face some of the best bowlers in the mm. country. You know, and get him, get him through that. Mm. You know, get him to understand that you, you can't just, no. you can't just, you know, um, just every ball, try to hit the cover of every ball, and you know you are facing some of the best. I mean, what Neil Barton runs another day bowling to young um, Luandre Pretorius, and, and it's a, it's a great opportunity for young Luandre opportunity uh, Pretorius, but. You know, Otniel Bartman is one of the best bowlers in the country mm. at the moment. And that's great. It's a, it's a wonderful challenge for the youngster. But you can't expect him just to come and play the way he played in the 19 World Cup. Yeah, and, 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 and what just saddens me, I mean, if we even looked like at Diabolk Brevis got in first season, bang, bang. Suddenly now he's finding difficulty to get into any side at the moment. I mean, he hasn't, um, you know, and, and I was also, yeah, it's good to play the T20, but getting to play... and. At least the Titans this season passed and he got 200s in four-day cricket. Because, I mean, how many games hasn't he played and he hasn't played a four-day game? And uh, that can't be good for you. And I believe to become a good T20 player as well, you've got to play the longer version. That, you know, show that resilience, show that fight. There's test cricket to be played. And you can play all formats. But uh, you've got to develop that appetite. It, it, it can't just be dollar signs all the time and... You know, cricket is not like putting Cremora in coffee. It, it, you can play rugby for 80 minutes and soccer for 90 minutes, but not cricket. It takes time to develop. It takes years to develop. And if you want to be a proper cricketer and sound and a career to last in all formats, and yes, it's great, you know, to have the razzmatazz in the game, but there's also the longer version that you've got to, got to show steel. There's also test cricket to be played, to me, which is number one. And that's in my opinion. The most important, I think, and I think if you can get yourself a base, a solid base in four-day cricket, it sets you well in future for T20 cricket. No, I hundred percent agree with you. Agree with you. It's, it's just somebody, you know. I mean, youngsters are getting brought up as, um, with all, uh, all that's all they do is just T20 cricket, um, and a lot of players will probably look at the red ball. It's, a, it's probably, a, no, it's probably a format. I, I'm not interested in them. And you learn so much about yourself as a playing for a cricket or test cricket. You know, it's a, you know, that's when you learn about, like I said, you learn about yourself, you know, as a bowler and as a batter, batting through sessions. Um, I remember Jock Kellis always, you know, he could play all formats of the game and he could play it equally well because he had a solid base as a mm. test player. And Herschel Gibbs was the same. Mm. He believed that. Um, the way he played Test cricket, you know, set him up to play T20 cricket and One Day cricket. And Vincent, the great thing is you go on tours with the team, and the team loses in a tour. Interesting competition in India or in England. The camaraderie that gets built, the togetherness, the togetherness in success, the togetherness when there's not success, the respect that gets built up, the character that gets built out of the love, the passion the goodness of the game and I'm not sure whether sometimes all those razzmatazz and you just come in ah, if I get out for naught so what coach told me go and eat the thing out of the ground and then you find situations like we have now is it healthy for cricket no can't be healthy 88, 89 for 8 with that uh, with the Zorzi Bird and Verena all international players back in the hut yes, yes I mean just watching the game of Titans game the other night and, and the commentators were talking about um, the amount of franchises that David Vies has played for, franchises and countries. He's played for 22 different teams. You know, it's a lot. <laughs> you yeah. think about it. It's another, yeah. wicket. another wicket, that. Another wicket. Another one bites the dust. Western Province nine down now. Just a matter of time or they're all back in the hut. And uh, we'll give an opportunity for the Dolphins to say, come on, let's get five points here on the silver platter at Newlands.
And that's the end of Wesley Badger. Yeah, I was going to be... Well, okay, I mean, let's look at the... I mean, he comes in at number... Comes in at number 10. And uh, I know there's not a lot expected of him, but surely just, just knock the ball around, bat that 20 overs, you know. And see where you get to. Who knows? <laughs> 120 might be a pass for here today, you know, so... And, but not not the way not the way they batted. Um, there's oh. been nothing. There's been no. There's been no like I said. There's been swing and seam and or turn. <laughs> it's just all the Dolphins have done is bowl straight and um, the Western Promise have just given it away. Yeah, it's been really poor. Easy catch in the end, down on the boundary. Ackerman again. <laughs> He's taken. Uh, He's in four uh, catches. Yeah, it? four catches in the thing. 89 for nine. Single there as he goes across the line. Liran Hendricks. I beg your pardon, the Nabe. He's off the mark. I was just talking about David Bisson. They didn't have the other day. Yeah. They were talking about Imi Tahir. I mean, Imi's played for almost 50 franchises. I don't know if it's true, but he's played for almost 50 franchises. It can't be right, is it? No. Nah. No, nah, it can't be. But I mean, he, well, he's, he's played for more franchises than David Visser's played. I mean, just listen to all the teams that David Visser played. Imi's played for more teams than that. You know, Imi's played in every league in the world, so. Yeah. <laughs> And it's going to be great, though. It's going to be great. I mean, if, if you think about it, I mean, you. I'm, I'm just listening to um, David Bissett the other day. I mean, sorry, I read an interview on him. You know, he's got a young family as well. You, you get home, pack up, and you go to the next. And there's also the danger that 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 players are almost happy to get out of a one tournament so that they can fly to the next tournament. Uh, guys like Livingston. And, Pollard were playing for other franchise in somewhere in, in Dubai, I think. A couple of days after they were knocked out of this tournament here, the SA20, and, and, and it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, you make a valid point, and, and, and you know what you, know, you can say, and I hear the argument, yeah, but players have to win money. I agree with that, yes. But if you're not going to be loyal somewhere in your life, when all this happening and you're playing all over the world exactly as you put the point, something's going to give somewhere along the line. And uh, that can't be healthy. To me, is if we want to make sure, and I'm just worried about cricket in its totality worldwide. We're not looking after the game enough, and something's going to give somewhere along the line. It's, it's, it's important that we look after the game, and the powers that be needs to do something about it. I, I am very worried of the future of cricket in the world. I've, I've heard Mikey Holding come out. I've now heard... So Ian both of them also come out and a couple of guys that have played and they make valid points. But somewhere along the line you've got to find the happy medium and, 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 and that is important to me so that there's a win-win situation for both player and the game. Yeah, just, I mean, if, you, if you're South African and you... You were a young South African cricketer with a lot of potential. I mean, you, you're looking at cricket and going that. Mm. You know, that's where we are at the moment. So, mm. Not the rest of the world. I mean, yeah. India, Australia, they're going to, I mean, in, they're going to be playing five tests against each other again, India and Australia. But, I, but you look at South Africa, I mean, it's two tests at a time. I mean, I remember being part of the, the protest and we played play four tests against India and yeah. four tests against Australia. Mm. You know, now they're playing two tests, and I mean, two tests. What is? It? I mean, and how often do they play? They don't play very often. So, as a young cricketer, do you, you look at your career and you think, do we go the route of red ball? Should I? Oh, oh, first error in the field. 
Jason Smith dropping the catch. I mean, it's it's probably the easiest catch of the lot today, and, and Jason yeah. dropped it. And he took one over his head, which was very difficult. Correct. And to turn around and catch it, that just shows what the game's all about eventually, yeah. Yes, I hear just pointing out that uh, since we've never played four tests against Australia, well, it's the most we've played, that's true, this was three, I think, uh, in international. I'm talking in a series. Um, England, we've played four, that plenty yeah, of we've played four. Uh, yeah, Lots of them. Uh, every time we've India, England has come here. No, we definitely played four. We played four in, in the UK and played four here. Yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, but he's right. You're right. We played. Yeah, yeah we played. Well, that I remember that I was involved in was yeah. three, three tests. Yeah. But, but Vincent, you're making the point, and I agree with you, at least three tests per series if we if we play. Yeah, I mean, just and think about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, just think about the last test series here. One all, you know, after Newlands. Yeah. You're just thinking, well, there's a third test now, so... And it's somewhere in the, whether it's at the Wonders or Centurion or you know, there's a third test now. A lot of it's exciting because both teams it's one all and, and, and they go home. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know. Absolutely. And there's I got mean, a we, I mean we played against New Zealand now, I mean okay, yeah. we lost, but you know it's it's as a test cricketer, I mean poor Chris Robada is not gonna get close to that five hundred wickets. No, but, well you that's know, it, yeah. I mean, he's, he's not gonna he's not gonna get past Dale Slain and as as a leading wicket taker in the country, you know, how's how somebody gonna even get close to the Nathan Lyons and the the Mutalitrans and <laughs> so it's it's yeah. Look, I just think that uh, you know, and I feel sorry for, for Shukri with his his test squad. It's, it's not a lot of cricket for them and. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not healthy. I mean, let's be honest about it. It's not healthy for coaches. It's not healthy for, for, for the country and, and, and where we are in terms of... And, and more needs to be done at the ICC level. And whoever goes there in the powers that be needs to have the experience to go and fight the situation uh, and say, guys, this is not on. I mean, we are a major cricketing nation in the world. It's not like we're just wishy-washy. We've uh, held that mace a long time in terms of, of test cricket and we got to fight for our place out there. We're not going to fight for your territory. It can't just be. And then the, the window of when, when what is played is also got to be. Yeah, you can't also have, I mean, I mean, I'd probably be criticized. I mean, IPL is far too long. Sorry, you know, six weeks should be the maximum. Can't be playing 15 weeks of IPL cricket. I'm sorry, it's, it's not on. I know the money's there and yeah, it's a player's good, but there's got to be a balance, guys. If we want to preserve test cricket, it's an, almost a run out. Uh, and I'll take the flak. I'm not scared to take the flak because uh, I'm not scared to sit my mind. I love the game immensely. Cricket has been good to me over years. I've seen some wonderful test match being played. And um, something's going to give some out. We're not going to preserve the game. That uh, you can't just have a handful of people. Uh, it's almost like there's a cake and only a quarter of the cake gets spread amongst 99% and 1% takes three quarters of the cake. Cannot be. It's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. No, I mean, Jeremy, I agree with you. Um, you know, just with the test situation at the moment, it's, it's quite sad. You know, oh yeah, we played four tests against the West Indies as well. well yeah. That was before. I, I, I remember yes, before. I, yeah, Last yeah. time we played in there and played in here, we played four tests. Yeah. You know, but now it's two tests. A series should be three tests at least. That's high in the air. There's someone underneath it. Dropped. Kaya Zondo on the fence. Not getting there. The ball was in here a long time. And it, took, it took him forever to get to the ball. And yeah, two drop catches in the last two overs. And the fielding has actually been fantastic. Oh, there's a World Cup also, South Africa 2027. That's also other excitement. We haven't had a World Cup yet. Oh, bowled him! Bowled him through the gate. Western Province sadly skittled. Humiliated. 96 all out. 17 overs. It is absolutely poor. Buren Hendricks, last man to go, bolts to Brian. And uh, the Dolphins have been absolutely superb in their effort.
Yeah, we've got to give credit to the Dolphins. I mean, they've they've come and they've played a very simple, they a simple game plan. Yeah. And, you know, assess the conditions quickly and and bowl to the conditions. Um, the Western Province surprisingly didn't adjust to that. And uh, you know, yeah, you're right. Disappointing. 96 all out. And out of that 96, Vincent, the extras were 12. So take 12 runs away. We had 45 for the first wicket. Half the runs. Yeah, Western Province, this is um, really, there won't be a happy coaching staff, I'm sure. But uh, Salih Nakadin and also uh, Justin Kemp won't be happy with what they've seen. The only thing Western Province can do now is to say we've got to bowl well. And make sure we get uh, the Dolphins into trouble earlier on. How that's going to happen, it's going to cost a miracle from above to actually help them get there as well. Really, it's not been good at all. Bowling of the uh, Dolphins have been superb. And uh, Samalene, he's three for 12 in his uh, three overs. It's been outstanding stuff. John John Smith took two. So Brian also took three. And then Ethan Bosch getting the wicket. It's just been wonderful. It's been a team effort. They've caught well, they've fielded well, and they've shown what they're all about. So, change of innings, it will be, we will have a short break and when you get, when we come back, it will be the innings of the Dolphins.
Um, we have the Dolphins about to start the innings, chasing a, a low 97. There wasn't a great batting, batting uh, performance by World Sports Betting Western Province. Although the conditions, the batting conditions, I thought it was good batting conditions. But it's definitely not a 97 all out. What do you think, Jeremy? I agree with you. I mean, I, I concur. It's definitely not a 97 wicket. Uh, it's the conditions, I think it's been superb for batting. As you said, there were no demons in the pitch. There was not much swing and seam. It was just uh, inept batting that got Western Province to where they are at the moment. They, I don't know how they're going to salvage something, but uh, they're going to need wickets. And I tell you what, I think um, four wickets in the power play is the least they can take if they're going to have any say in this game. But they've been so poor and that the nature of being so poor that uh, it's probably just a matter of time when the Dolphins will win this game if they bat half decent. Yeah, just, just looking at, uh, during the break, just looking at scores around the country, some low scores. Yeah. <laughs> Northwest got bowl out, Northwest Dragons got bowl out for 85. The Warriors, 127 for 8. Tuskers, 141. And obviously Western Province got bowl out for 96. There's not a lot of high scores around the country. Nice. Um, and yeah, look, some of the results are obviously going to be play a big... Um, is obviously going to, there's going to be some changes on that log. Oh, that's for sure. Simmons to start from the Carbon Grove end. Sondo, whoops, he wants to take a run. That's what we're going to need. And uh, Verena whoops off the bales, but uh, luckily zondo has gone back quickly. So Rudolfson opening the batting uh, with uh, Kaya Zondo. Use of the feet down the wicket. It goes maximum. He's not going to muck around. They've got business to do. Oh. Suppose being down in Cape Town and uh, coming from Durban. What's the place called in Camps Bay that the players like to go to? Caprice, yes. That's where um, Zondo is aiming tonight. Let's get to Caprice. Yeah, look, it's a possible bonus point. We could take them into a very good position in the vlog. Um, gets a, a big gap between them and Western Province. They're probably aiming for the bonus point. I mean, they wouldn't. Why wouldn't they go for the bonus point? Win? Yeah, absolutely. They get five points. What are they on? Twenty-seven points. Is Twenty-seven. That? Yeah, take five. Them to, oh, take them to thirty-two. Take them to thirty-two. Daylight between them and Western Province. Yeah, but Titans. I mean, if Titans win today, it brings me back into the equation. <laughs> they will go above Western Province. And then it's not going to be easy for them to get into the semi-finals. Then I can bet you my bottom dollar. So the great shot by Kaya. Played nice and late. Yeah. Just nice and late and just guided it past a backward point for four. Two, two different shots. You know, if you just look at the shot before this and look at the way he's played this now. You know, his intention was always just look for one and, and got four. Yeah, Kaizondo, it just seems that the older he's become, the better he's also started to play. I tell you what, I remember we were on tour. He was captain of the, of the A-team when, when I managed and we played a test match against, uh, well, not a test match, it was a one-day game against Australia A as well in Bangalore. And I know Alex Carey was still playing for Australia A. They had, um, I remember, they had uh, the one chapel who was the coach helping with assisting Australia and I tell you as Kaya Zonda we won the game he got a magnificent hundred against a good bowling attack of an Australian A team and with Alex Carey being wicked keeper it was, it was well, probably one of the best knocks I've seen in his career 
And I remember saying to him afterwards, Al, I think this is the, you know, you've got to kick on from here because that was just a very, very good captain's knock and he, and he, and he really solid, solid performance. Buren Hendricks was also in that team. And I was so proud, he was so chuffed with himself that day. Now that he's much more matured, I, I think he's always had the talent, but I just also think at times he just gave it away when he should have been fighting more. Now these days you think there's much more price on his wicket. He, he really, and even now opening the batting for the Dolphins, you never seen Kaya Zonda opening the batting. He was always down number four, number five, taking that responsibility. Oh, that's it. So the music goes with the cricket played by Western Province earlier today. It's like the dying swan. <laughs> Tucked around. Just shows you how easy runs are flowing. First over, we into. Second over, I beg your pardon. 12 without loss. That's exactly almost the identical start Western Province got off to. Yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, the look, Western Province, I mean, uh, they've got two class spinners. They don't have a, you know, the seam attack is not as, not as good as Dolphins, that's my opinion. Why it? You know, Darren the Pavlin's come in for Othniel Bartman and just continued doing left off, just continued where he left off and um, just did, did the job today. But yeah, it's, it's, it, and there was nothing s spectacular about the, bowl, the Dolphins attack. They just did what they needed to do, bowl straight, fairly their lengths and, um, and got, got wickets. And it was probably just poor batting by Winston Promise. Vincent, you can let the cat out of the bag now and tell us. I mean, you've been involved in coaching and with, um, you've been on, I think, more tours with the South African team that I can count being on holiday. <laughs> with all your experience over the years, your team in a situation like that and you'd seen batting like that, what did your words have been at the change of innings? I, I probably wouldn't have said much. Hmm. I probably wouldn't. I, I've, I've never been a, a coach to to say much during the game. When I say say much, um, have a go. Yeah. Um, or, you know, at the end of the day, you still can, because you, they needed to go out there and comp still compete and, and who knows, possibly win the game. And we have chased, um, I mean, so they had to defend low totals before and won. So, you know, but I'd rather just reflect, process it all and then react probably tomorrow, you know, get the boys together and, you just do a, the post-match um, review of the game um, as to where it's gone wrong, uh, you know, but not today. Um, I've been approached before <laughs> as a bowling coach when we were, um, we were playing India in India and, and, and at close of play and they were 450 and, and um, what's his name, um, but in the same way they're 252 mm. not out. Shot. It's 252 not out. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this guy, Bat, and I'm thinking, you know, you're probably going to score 500 tomorrow. Um, and at close of play, what happens? Uh, Michael Owen Smith was our media, media manager then, back then. Calls me over and says, uh, ESPN would like to have an uh, interview with you about today's bowling performance. <laughs> so what bowling performance. <laughs> you know, so. You know, so, uh, so I had to do the interview, so, it, you know, but the, 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 inter the interview I'm, I'm doing, it's not going to go into a change and I'm not going to be saying the same things to the, to the mm. bowlers, you know, we've got to, we've got to, they kn I know they're upset, I know they, they um, and they were always hard on themselves, so mm. I knew that they were ups you know, upset, they knew that it was wasn't a great day, so rather, rather than me coming in and, you know, and having a go and, and piling more misery on them, um, I will normally have it the next morning. And, uh, and I remember us playing in a test match in, in Durban against India, against England, and getting totally outplayed, batting, bowling, losing against England, and then coming here. And I, again, not saying anything in Durban, coming here and just 
getting the bowlers onto the onto the square before the match started. Um, sorry, before before our first practice, um, setting them down in the square and just reflecting and and obviously doing a post match review of the game and and then everyone's clear. I mean, you, I've, I've, you've allowed all the emotion to get out of the system, and you know and and. And obviously allowed the players now to focus and refocus, and um, we beat them here. Yeah. But that's that's what I would do. I mean, it's, be, it's very difficult to 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 be standing in the change room then having a full go at, at you know at your team, and they still got to go out there and perform, and they know they haven't played anywhere near their potential. So um, so no, so that's that's what, that's what, that would yeah. be me. Although I'll be furious. I mean, I would want to yeah. take each and every one of them into the into the toilet and give him a smack <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I would rather yeah just just allow a lot of the emotion first to get out of the system and and do a, a post-match uh, review t tomorrow and because look I've got I need these players back on Friday night they've got a big weekend coming up I need them Friday and I need them on Sunday yeah and they know they need to step up the that's right but I mean there comes a time sometimes I mean if if performances is continuously like the way it is, uh, you look at it. There, there does come a day sometimes where you've got to go hard and say to guys, listen, you've not shown the responsibility that you need. You can do it in a calm way, or you can, do, you know, you can do it in the rusty rustless way, <laughs> or whatever. Um, and I think we're all different in personalities. And and you're so right to saying players would know when they've let themselves down. Sometimes just a stare and a look gives a message. But there comes a time where sometimes with certain players, you've got to go and and be hard at them. To get them back at that level again. Yeah, yeah people react differently. Yeah. I mean, players react differently to, um, to, you know, to, to the way the coach reacts. I mean, um, so, so, so some players I used to find like some players in, they actually reacted to when I was aggressive, mm, mm. you know, and my, and was hard words and harsh words, and you know, others were would back off, you know, if you were if that was the your, your, your attitude, um, they would back off and. So there's, so there's a sort of fine line, but you've got to you've got to find a, the, a happy medium, medium. And, and yeah, and, and 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 address it. You know, um, it's a part of Kai Zondo's game that I don't enjoy. Mm. Um, Throw and figure what he's trying to do when you know you got you got the third man and finally up. He's trying to lap him, which is fair enough. But he's not only trying to lap him; he's reverse lapping. It's probably one of the most difficult shots in, in cricket. Um, trying to reverse lap a seamer. Yeah, that's been his downfall. And, and, and as I say, I look at all the other knocks he played in India, trying to play shots like that. But he played 100, that was good. But he does let himself down. Now look at that. I mean, that is just just a wild switch, hoping for the best. It was a, a wideish delivery outside of stump. But um, just sometimes you've yeah, got look, I mean, he's, he's, he's the first over, he's played yeah. unbelievably well. I mean, he's... Hit the ball down for six. Late cut for four. Um, ten off the over. You know, put a lot of pressure back on the bowler. And then oh. this over has come and played completely different. You know, it's an area of probably his game that I also probably as a coach, and I've coached him many times, didn't enjoy. I felt sometimes, you know, there's a little bit of show poning and I didn't enjoy it. Mm. Like, I, he's highly skilled. And I know he can do amazing things at a crease. Um, but if you compare the two overs now, is completely different to the way he, and fair enough, it's a different bowler. But your attitude should still be the same. I can hit the ball down the ground, you know, instead of trying to take on, you know, third man and fine leg. Absolutely. That's going to be wide. What a good delivery from Nabe. He's had a good over up to now. A 20 without loss in the third over. Power play. Batting at seven and over. They're only required to bat at four and a half. In T20 cricket, which is nothing. Wickets in hand. Uh, uh, yes, uh, he scooped this one. Going to be one bounce of the fence for four. Well, he just helped it on its way. The, that's the direction the ball was going, and he just clipped it with precision. 24 without loss. Yeah, dolphins are cruising here. Yeah. I mean, it's 
don't have to do anything special to win this game comfortably and with a bonus point. Now oh, that's going to put them in prime position, as you said, on the lock. Looking at the lock position as uh, to where teams are. Western Province Titans win. They go past Western Province. They'll move into fifth place. And that's not going to be good. As I said, next weekend is a big weekend for them. They'll have to win both their games then if they uh, want to advance to the semi-finals. And they play the... G-Bet Rocks Friday night in Paul. Yeah, look, um, G-Bet Rocks for some other reason always seem to lift the game when they play against Western Province. No matter where they are on the log, it's happened in the past. The last game got washed out here, it was got rained out here. Yeah. The last derby they played. Absolutely, yep, that was rained out. Cross him and he's just trying to throw a lazy bat outside the off stump there. Grant Rulofsen. <laughs> you just see Western Province have struggled since the final at the Wanderers when, where they should have won in three days. It just seems that the, then they started off this competition, had a couple of wins and suddenly... It just seems as if there's no more oomph left. Well bold, well feel it. Good run. You see, I mean, the game situation has it is, unfortunately for uh, Western Province. You know, there's Dolphins have to play risk-free cricket here. Mm. They don't even have to take many risks, and they'll still win with a bonus point. You know, um, considering. You know, chasing, chasing 97 is... Yeah, you're right. Just risk-free cricket. Normal cricket, as you say. Proper innings. And you get there comfortably. Not to be wiped. Yes, indeed. Uh, Julian Hendricks just... Oh, is he limping off again now? He's now there. It's a bit of a... He plain is it his foot or is it groin? Does he need some sawdust? And the good shoes coming off, seems like it. What it was, what's it, what's it, the landing, your foot off. Change of boots. Ah. He's taking his boots off. It seems as if uh, he needs to change his boots, probably not. Uh, feeling that sometimes those spikes they slide and it does make it difficult for bowlers because I don't think Vincent there's any ditches or holes in the, no, the, in the no, bowling looked, area no, it looked, yeah it looked okay yeah it looked like he's staying I mean both just changed his boots we lost one or two spikes Boots gone. Are the boots required? <laughs> Look at these players in the bags and packing in your bag. Oh, I tell you what, I, I must admit that I, I enjoyed stint being manager and looking after players and that type of thing. I mean, so many bats and balls and, <laughs> and boots. I, I, to be honest, I mean, I, I actually felt, I mean, uh, I know I spent many a year with Gulam Raja, who was a manager, the late Gulam Raja, and he was unbelievable but you know I, I, felt, I felt sorry for him you know I mean I you know many just says leave this year leave your bags there blah 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 leave it this and, and, and like I didn't get here I didn't yeah. get to the air you know and, and um, yeah, you know I should feel sorry I should <laughs> help him I said cool, I'm, I've got to help you you can't do this on your own and you know it was unbelievable manager yeah logistics so yeah logistics I mean you've, you've done it <laughs> it's, a, it's a yeah and yeah. you know not every player is tuned in and dialed no. in. You know, they. You got to. There's some players you got to remind twice. I mean, I mean, we 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 flew between the islands in in, in, in the Caribbean, and AB was getting this his guitar with him. And I said to him, AB, you, you do know you're gonna forget this guitar on one of the plates. Yeah. 
you know, and true as God. <laughs> we walked, we got into, sorry, we got into the building and I said, hey, where's your kitana? Where you know? uh, <laughs> Oh, there's a chance gone of begging. She wasn't a difficult chance, eh? No, not at all. Well, this has been the nature of how poor Western Province have been today. wasn't a difficult catch at all. But you're right, it's, it's probably where, the, where they are mentally at the moment. Yeah. You know. Yeah, Winston, we've had our words. I, I remember a player saying to me, we were on our way from Paul to, to the airport to get a flight to Joburg to go and play the Jazzy Stars at the time of the Mzanzi League. That one's clipped around the corner for one. And halfway in the bus, one of the players said, manage. My boots are at the, it's back at the hotel. And I said, well, it's not my problem. <laughs> I said, I've got the air tickets here and uh, we need to fly. And he said to me, it was national player, you know, Gulam Raja would have gone fetch my boots. I said, well, there's a difference between the rhino and Mr. Raja. <laughs> I said, I tell you what, I'll stop the bus. I'll give you your air ticket. This was halfway on the N1. I can stop the bus. I'll give you your air ticket. See you in Joburg. <laughs> Moral of the story, these guys are so spoiled these days, some of the players, you could phone his sponsor when we got to the hotel, he had a new pair of boots <laughs> delivered. Yeah. yeah, yeah. look, I mean, they do get spoiled, I mean, we, we know that, it's, uh, but yeah, look, I mean, you also, they got to be as comfortable as possible, you, yeah. know, you know, I mean, you know, players walking around all his bags, carrying all his bags in the morning. But yeah, look, I did just, I mean, I did feel for, for the manager of the side, especially logistics guys, you know, especially when traveling around like it. And it must be crazy for these, these IPL teams. <laughs> and you know, that four o'clock in the morning, you know, you, oh you say God, the yeah, night yeah. before you go to bed, you say to, I remember there were nights where the logistic, the, 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 the liaison in India, Shami phones me every day, not phones me, but sends message. He had a bit of a hemorrhage, Sujith Bahara. We had him on both tours I was to India and what a fantastic man. That's a good shot. It's down the ground. In the arc. It's gone all the way. So here we go, Kayazondo. What's wrong with that? Yeah. You just hit the ball straight back down there instead of trying to flick the ball over. Reverse slap the ball over. Short third, man. He's hit it straight back down the wicket. There we go. Six runs. Yeah, and in India, four o'clock in the morning, myself and Sujit and the baggage, we'd be off to the airport. By the time the players arrive there at seven o'clock, you know, you're still blurry eyed and you say, Here's your air ticket because we booked in all the bags and uh, it's just done, done that. And, uh, you know, especially when you're traveling, but a uh, lot of fun in between. Uh, that's cut away and that will be four more. Easy pickings now. Yeah, it's a poor delivery. Short, wide. Even to the short cars on the, that's easy runs. But when you when something's a passion, my mate, you do anything. Yeah, look, I mean, it's, you know, being part of, and I think, I mean, being part of international cricket, and I was there for a long time, and, and uh, there we go, he's, he's done it. Jeremy, what do I know about this guy? He's just yeah. playing an unbelievable shot. What do we know about this guy? No, no, we don't know much. He's we just, don't know much. Uh, he's just reverse lap. Tina <laughs> Abe. For six. Yeah, that's what he can do at times. Guys yeah, look, I mean, the... look, these guys practice this yeah. every day. I mean, it's, it's not a shot that he's trying for the first time coming to the wicket. He's, they practice it every day. I mean, their coaches encouraging him to do that because they have the, they have the ability to do it. You know, he's going to ball wide, that's a little stump there. I can't lap you over a third man. I mean, sorry, over fine leg, but I can do that. And like I said to you, he has the skills, he, he can do it, but sometimes he just, you know, you see, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's just done it now. Yeah. The bowler is not going to bowl it in the same area because he knows that that is, you know, what you, what and your no intention is. And no-go Yeah. <laughs> that's your intention. So start thinking like a bowler. Start thinking, well, what would he be thinking now? Uh, maybe he's going to get it back of length now, which is done. And I could have stand there and probably hit it through mid-wicket for four. Yeah, he's... Um, I'm just saying, it's so much talent. 
this young man and um, I mean you talk about the, uh, uh, a, an innings you played in, in, in that against Australia I mean he played we won the tour in 2015 also tri-series in, in Chennai and mm -hmm. he got we chased geez, we chased I think almost 400 um, and it's one of those games you, you know one team scores 400 and you score 370 yeah you know you <laughs> And he got under and not, not a great knock. In fact, he. It's another. There we go. Yeah. Poor delivery. Helped on its way. Not much leg buys. Sort of came with a bat. 50 up to the Dolphins. And that in the power play. I know they're cruising this. On a canter. You know what you're saying? And he got, he got 100 and not, not a. Probably one of the best knocks I've coached him many times. In many teams. Including Hong Kong Sixers, which we won, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you did. Oh, that's right. But, but I mean, he's, he's, you know, this is the ability that he's got. You know, it's just that I think that he's just at times he's got a, and, and I thought the older you're going to get, you, you're probably going to realize, you know, my career is, hasn't gone the way it should have gone. I should have played a lot more for South Africa, which he did play for South Africa. Um, but sometimes he just tries to be too clever. Yeah, I remember also he, he threw his wicket away. <laughs> I think it was in Vizak or wherever, Viskatapatun. We were there in some areas. We've been to many places in India, and that's where cricket has taken you. And I was still smoking that time, Vincent, I must admit. And I saw the shot he played, and in anger, I went to stand behind the side screen on the other side. I probably had two cigarettes, and I, and I mean, just at the same in, time? Yes, I probably in anger. I came back, I sat down, and he had the audacity to come, and he said, he, look, uh, he looked at me because I was there was a chair next to me. He looked, he looked at me sheepishly there from the change room, and he saw I was watching, and he and he quiet. Oh, that's uh, poor fielding. That's for that just sums up the day for Western Province. That so he looked at me so sheepishly, and then he wandered his way like three overs later, and he said uh, he came and sat next to me, and he said that I'm sorry for that shot. And I looked at him, I never said a word. I said, well, I think you owe the team an apology after the game, not me. I'm only the manager. And he, said, uh, he said to me the evening, we won the game though, he came the evening, he said, he just, the fact that I didn't say a word, he just saw the fire spitting out of my eyes. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, you, you know, you, you, you sometimes, oh, another chance gone a begging. Kyle Verena, wow. So I think it's a little bit more difficult, that, that one, compared to the first one. But if you can get two hands there, you could have got one hand there. You know, you, with one hand you can reach further. You probably should have taken it with one hand. Uh, he got there. He got there with both hands, eventually. But, uh, yeah, I'm just saying, but if, if, yeah. if you get both hands there, you, if you, with one hand you can stretch further. Cut away again this time. He's insurance on the fence on the offside. Yeah, but just in, in closing, you're talking about teams and players. I mean, eventually you get so attached to them and uh, they become like your children uh, and you start protecting them, looking after them, making sure everything goes well. And that's the part I enjoyed and, and, and the camaraderie and, the, and you know, coming sometimes to your hotel room at night and wanting to have a chat with you and sometimes with your personal lives and sharing deep, you know, where you could give advice and that type of thing. And I, I always thought that to me was always the nicest thing about having players and, and building up relationships. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you look at, I mean, tours before, I mean, we go on a tour to Australia or, or England, it's, it's two months. You know, you're playing three, four tests, five one days, you know, three or five T20s, it's a long, long tour. And, you know, you develop relationships with, with players. Um, besides uh, me being a bowling coach, obviously I had a relationship with the bowlers, but I mean, uh, the whole team, you you get to know everyone and, and their families and and you develop good relationships with these guys. And, you know, now they tour is a lot shorter, the in yeah. and out. And, but you're right, you do develop relationship with these players. Easy pickings. That's all they can do now. Going to win this. Bonus point, lots of overs to spare. 57 without loss.
135. Rulofsson has been quiet thus far. Sondra has been in the action, and that's exactly how you pace yourself in this innings, that uh, you're going to have a one batsman leading, the other one just plays the anchor role. And there's the catch. Ivali tries to play that scoop once again and perishes. 57 for one. It's the third time unlucky for Bazondo and third time lucky for Kaya. I mean, so with Calvarena. It's a good catch. But again, I'm, I'm still <coughs> trying to figure okay, why, why, the need, why the need to play that shot. You know, no, fair enough, third man's up, but, and, and he can play it. But rather just, I mean, it's with, hit the ball, pass extra cover before. Probably the, the song played the most around the world at every stadium. Baseball, soccer, rugby, cricket, all the way. Sweet Caroline. It's such a great song when the, yep. stadium, when the stadium's full. Absolutely. It's such a great song. John John Smartstein at number three. He's not going to throw his wicket away. But he also, I mean, John John. He'll probably come and play though. That's his game. I like Wesley Bedger, saw a bit of him. Um, made his debut, I think it's the Warriors, I think. MPE in the four day games. And it was very impressive. Yeah, his figures were very good. Yeah, he also went to play club cricket in England. And after him a trick and he started off, so it's been a, a bit of a road for the young man. That's, four. That's clipped away. Good start. Maybe too straight. And Rulofsson now in that. Once it had the beating of the fielder on the leg side through that mid wicket region, it wasn't going to be stopped. Outfield looking beautiful at the moment. Been a bit of rain in Cape Town last week. We had howling winds. Just the winds were terrible. Oh, actually. my goodness me. I was taking panels off the roof and roofs off. Trees were uprooted. Shows how we can change here. We can, Cape Town, we can have four seasons in a day. <laughs> You're right. I, I walked across the field. I looking great. sure the groundsman can't wait for the end of the season so that he can start working on the square. And I believe speaking to him as well, he said certain of his wickets need to be redone, relayed. And a couple of grounds around the country to groundsman were telling me some of the wickets on the square are tired. Sometimes you've got to relay new wickets in order for it to freshen up and some can be... And that's a big operation. Townsmen are also special people. It takes time to care. You've got to nurture the wickets. Better delivery from Beja. Yeah, 
There's over 50 veterans cricket interprovincial tournament, which will take place from the 15th to the 19th of April in Johannesburg. Now that should be something to look forward to. What are these over 40, over 40 World Cups here in South Africa? And South Africa won that tournament earlier on this year. Last year there was an over 50 tournament here as well. Vincent, you ready to take your boots out again? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> the day I packed my boots away, I said, that's it, I'll, you'll never see me. I'm, I'll, I'll take my football boots out, but not my yeah. cricket boots. Yeah, that's it, done, yeah, done, done, done dusted. dusted. Yeah. Yeah. Is there the, the current club club champs is on as well as at, in the moment? Where, where's it? Is club Pretoria. Pre, is it Pretoria? Yeah. Club champs going on at the moment as well. Though. I was watching quite a good game yesterday, Martis and, and Tux. Um, at one stage, Martis were cruising. I thought they were cruising. They had um, Tux in all sorts of trouble. Six down, 90 for six. They were chasing 230. Yeah. And uh, young uh, Mary Brett got a 98 not out or something. And they, they won the game. Won the game for three wickets. Quite a good game. Oh, that's good. Ryan Bailey will be chuffed. <laughs> no, they lost. They oh, lost. they lost. They, no, they lost. They lost to Tux. Okay. He'd be livid because they, <laughs> at one stage they were cruising. Yeah, good character, Ryan Bailey. Hendricks to continue from the wine begin. The bat of John John Smart isn't broken, it just sounded so too blankish to me. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> the next ball could go into the outside. Eh? Yeah. No, it just sounded as if the Something that the hoodies has. He's having a look at it, but it must be all fine. Yeah. He doesn't muck around John John Smuts when he's in full cry. And quick single. Way down to third man. Fielding only a single. Limits it to one. But a uh, yard or two square of him, he'd have no chance getting there because that ball flew down to that region. Holding on to his hamstring down there, is that? Yeah, it landed a bit awkwardly there when he went down. Oh, George Linda. He hasn't bowled yet. Yeah, it just looked, it looked awkward when he went down, his foot slipped there. And, uh, some interesting scores, Vincent. Yeah, there's some interesting. I think Lions, are, they're cruising. Yeah. Um, rocks, rocks are chasing 128, so um, you know the Rocks I could lose a few wickets and struggle to get it. 62 for three. Titans, 47 for one. Dolphins cruising here. Yeah. The Rocks can re remain wicketless and bad on. They can I'm reach that score. I'm just watching. I mean, I know he's had a, a good few seasons now. Western Province, he's played, you know, he's played for the Lions as well. I mean, he's 34 years old now. Um, you know, I mean, how much, how much longer has Buren got? Left in that tank. Yeah. You know, he's playing all three formats and it's it's a lot. And then on top of it, he played in SA20 as well. It's a lot for a, you know, for a 34 year old and you gotta keep fit all the time. And yeah, and he's also 
had his woes of injury. I mean, he had a major back injury at one stage, yeah. Jay Vincent, when he was really quick swinging it and all that. And uh, he really fought back bravely after that. He must have lost a bit of pace after that because you're never the same. But, uh, he's had a good career thus far. Been impressive. No, he has. He has been. He's bowled well. I thought he bowled well, you know, prior to SA20 and, you know, lead into, going into the SA20. I thought he started very well. As, but then sort of, then got dropped and I didn't see him play again. Well, he's, he's obviously been still a, well, a, one of the leading wicket takers here. Le led a good attack. I mean, I always felt that this past two years, you know, we, we had him, we got Nandri Berger, um, Tinabi, um, Last year they had still had Sheppo Moreki playing here, Pato in the four days, um, then Patterson in the four days. It's a good bowling attack, very good bowling attack. Um, and, and, and added bonus of obviously having Nandre who's, who's got the pace. But having Buren, you know, and at one stage, I mean, even this past season, Buren swinging ball nicely. Him and, and Nandre opening the bowling. We had the best attack in the country, the two of them. Yep. Two of them and and, and, and then Patterson. And then Packers then Patterson charging in the game for Nottingham. Yeah, no, he's he's uh, having a good uh, good run. He yeah, looked well there last season as well. Yeah, no. Look he manages himself very well and I mean I, I know when Shukri got back from the New Zealand and spoke to Shukri and they were the New Zealand he was telling me the New Zealand batters Kane Williams that they were very impressed with Dane and he's the one bowler who maybe just lacked a little bit of pace but he's the one bowler that kept him you know on their, you know, kept him on their toes and so he was one bowler yeah you learn to keep to do to have different skills eventually oh, see the air gone wow well done, Wesley Badger. Burgled him. And where's how many wickets that ball has got? The short ball. <laughs> it's just got steep on and steep, and all of the batters seem to be rushed with the, with the short ball. Steve Leeds burgled in that time. Now, Marcus Ackerman in at number four. Six fifties. Best of 74. That was for Northwest. Top of the betting average at the moment, the T20 betting averages. Yeah. Required to win. I think the game will quiet them down a bit now, and uh, two of them will see their moment uh, quietly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're still comfortably going to do it with a bonus point. Ackerman of the mark immediately. Just uh, tucking it around the corner for a single. It's interesting that uh, that delivery's actually got quite a few wickets today. Short ball banged into the into the into the deck. Time to rewind it.
It's coming back to next weekend, Jeremy's yeah. a big weekend for Western Province. Yeah, got, got the got the rocks on Friday and then Titans here on Sunday. Which is gonna be a massive game. The Titans will go past him now. It will not uh, I mean the the North Northwest Dragons currently uh six on six on a log. Uh, they they will they will lose today. Um, so Titans will go above Western Province. So that's almost like a little quarter final <laughs> next week. Is it straight to to semis and final? Yeah, I think so. Top four teams are through semi final. Yeah, through semi, two semis, two and semis final. and a final eventually. Yeah. yeah. Now the big thing is, you know, Western Province being naughty by some of the losses they had because on top of the log, it's so important. You get a home final, crowd in, play in front. They've won one trophy. They should have had two. I mean, that that final, that's where I started getting absolutely livid. I was with that final at the Wanderers. I just thought about watching on day three, this is it. And then they just you know, they started falling apart. I mean, take nothing away from the Lions. They came from behind. They yeah. were behind in that game. and. Uh, the Lano Potrita. Wow. He and bowled well. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he, he, he single handedly came back and I was saying won it. Uh, so, Onken Yaku now into the attack. I mean, just nothing wrong with the surface. I mean, the surface has been absolutely magnificent. I thought the groundsman prepared a very good, very good wicket. It's not easy this time of the, d the year sometimes. Luckily, that's an afternoon game, but if you prepare wickets for the morning, it's still cold. It's very cold now at night. And, uh, yeah, look, it's, I mean, uh, the, the, you know, the square's been used. I mean, it's, yeah. it's another short ball. Oh, that's going to land safe. Yeah, it's going to land safe. But again, a short ball, um, better not getting on top of it and, you know, seem to be rushing them whenever they bowl the yeah. short balls. But as it's coming back, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, Jeremy, you know now that the evenings are getting a lot cooler. In fact, the days are cooler. Mm. You know, I mean, I came to the ground, it was supposed to be 25. It doesn't feel like it. No. The, wind, the wind blowing, it's cooler. You know, the, the wickets don't dry it quick enough. It's, it's over, over, been overutilized over the spa season. It's driven away. Nabi will hail it in. Haul it in, I'll uh, beg your pardon. And they, three runs they got. Just to the further side of the ground that falls a long way towards the Western Province Club side of the field. Campground Road side. Yeah, my mother wishes to say the sun in winter is weak. In summer it's strong and it's hot. In the winter sun. It's again in the air. <laughs> wow. Once in the short ball, I certainly. Yeah, I mean, it should be used more. It should have been. Should have been used a bit more. The square boundaries of the long way away. I mean, surely the one, the one on the, to the to the oaks on the far side. There, it's a long boundary. I'll be banging the ball in there. Yeah. The miss heat is gonna get you caught. Gotta hit it solidly and far for six if you. That's driven nicely. Wow. Always looks so elegant when a left hander drives a ball. Why is it wrong? Yeah, no, the mornings, mornings, you can feel the chill in yeah. the mornings and the, in the sunset. Yeah, it's almost like that. You don't want to get out of bed. <laughs> Just that five minutes longer. In summer, you're brisky, you're up at five and get the day started. Then you retire that, I mean, sometimes that red eye flight to Joburg, six o'clock, you <laughs> fly out of here, you gotta be up and going to the airport at half past four. The morning. Yeah. Come home for the weekend and on a Monday morning I'll be back in Johannesburg. <laughs> back in Pretoria, so 
Yeah, you get those, those early morning flights. So the Lions have won in nine over nine point two overs, one yeah. but ten wickets. Bonus point, another one. Yeah, rocks are ambling along, seventy six for three. Titan seventy seven for two. And this game's just about over. Yeah, this is almost over. Another thing is, I mean, we've had some sad news over the weekend, and I think it's you know, it's driven nicely the death of Brendan Foote, who has uh, been head of um, legal affairs at Supersport. He was president of the Northern's Titans, 62. And, um, sadly gone with cancer. What a fantastic guy he was over the years. Served on the board of Cricket South Africa as well. So to Judith, the kids, the family, and all those um, involved with Brendan Foote over many, many years, please accept our, our heartfelt condolences. He was truly a remarkable person and a sad loss for cricket. May his dear soul rest in peace. Yeah, good man, Benefit. Oh, cricketing, cricketing person through and through. He was. Loved the game. I must admit, I'm fascinated now. It, it seems like you still got it. You, you, I know you're not old. I'm not, I'm not by any means suggesting that, uh, Vincent. But uh, the zest you, 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 you glued onto all the scores here in the cricket, and the, you, you talk about watching club games and uh, talking about. Uh, I watch a lot of cricket. I mean, yeah. I watch. I mean, I watch. Yesterday, I was watching um, club champs. Uh, there was a big ladies game on yesterday with the with Dolphins playing against um, the Lions. Big game yesterday, you know, Dolphins Dolphins winning the fifth day of competition. So I was watching a bit of that. I watch a lot of cricket. Uh, so uh, <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow my my one of my ex clubs is, is playing in a final T20 competition here. Yeah, so so you'll be here tomorrow. I'll, I'll as be well. here tomorrow to come and watch. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I thought you were going to spend more time with Debbie, <laughs> but. Um, I do. I spend a lot of time at home. <laughs> <laughs> when you retire, you do wake up some morning and say, "What do I have to do? What do I do today?" What do I do today? Yeah, looking for um, something to do. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there's there's a lot happening at the moment still. So it's good. Yeah, I, I watch a lot of cricket. I watch all these cricket, all these games on on YouTube. Short ball again. That will go for four. Won't be uh, stop. That's a bit of a top edge there. Yeah, I must admit, I also watch uh, a lot of cricket. Love the game. What, what I actually don't watch a lot of, funny enough, is IPL. I, I don't actually watch a lot of IPL. Neither do I. I just check what the scores are. I, I really don't watch much. I, of that. I, I think I, it becomes a bit to me sometimes too much yeah, of a muchness. I think when I want to watch these, these certain players, that I like watching. Yeah. I like in, in some of the bowlers. I liked watching. I wanted to see what the fuss was about this, this young young guy bowling 170 k's per hour. So, <laughs> so I went to watch him bowl, and, and obviously went to watch Gwena bowl. Uh, you know, so but I haven't watched a lot of that. It's another great shot by Marcus. Yeah, he's a good shot. Oh, wow, it's easy pickings now. They one shot away from victory. So yeah, so I, although I do watch a lot of cricket, I don't, I don't watch a lot of IPL. So when I go to Twitter, people's talking about this, and I'm trying to think ahead, what, what, wonder what game that was. <laughs> Yeah, there's such a lot going on. I mean, every day there's a game yeah. in the IPL. And sometimes you can get lost in, in translation. So. But it's also, be, you know, being for so long involved with Cricket South Africa and, and knowing basically all the players that's yeah. playing now, you know, you, there's an interest in it. I, I like to see how certain players are doing and where they are in the games. And, and I'm still in touch with so many cricketers and, and coaches. It was good to see the, um, Gordon Parsons' team winning the other yeah, day. I mean, was, Limpopo, Limpopo. I mean, that was great. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was, I know, it, I mean, last year the South African and 19 won that tournament, but, but it was good to see, you know, Gordy turn things around at, at Limpopo. Yeah, good they old fashioned well, coaching, yeah, and that's they, it, and that was Gordon would be that way inclined, and uh, well done to Limpopo. Fantastic yeah, some shrewd signings, some older players, they brought some experience into that setup, and, 
you know, and, and there they won it, and they won it comfortably. They, yeah. they they played good cricket throughout the competition. That's going to be wide. I'm called by uh, umpire Jelly, Bongani Jelly, also very experienced these days. Been around a long time. Some umpires have retired. Marie Rasmus, probably one of the best umpires in the world, calling it a day. It's quite interesting. I mean, yes. you say, that he, that you do it now. I thought yeah. he had a good few years left in him. I, I thought so too. I think yeah, so. People have their reasons. Yeah. Vincent, there comes a and time. And that's the game. Yeah. There comes a time sometimes in players just call it a day. As that one goes to the boundary and the Dolphins comprehensively thrashing Western Province here at Newlands. And uh, uh, they go past Western Province on the log and it's been an emphatic victory at uh, Newlands. John John Smuts and Marcus Ackerman are just shaking hands. Western Province will know that uh, it hasn't been a good day at the office at all. And uh, they know that um, it's back to the drawing board and um, that they've got to go and sort themselves out. And as uh, Vincent was saying, that um, it's an important weekend next week. Um, it's, there's eight points up for grabs and uh, one down the road in Paul and uh, then one at Newlands against the Titans. So the Hollywood Bed Dolphins go to back to Durban, five points in their back pocket and an eight wicket victory. Yeah, it's, that's well played, well played the Dolphins. It wasn't a great performance by Western Province at all. Uh, the batting let them down again. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, like I said, take your hats off to the Dolphins. They came here, did the job, and, and they were excellent. They were excellent with the ball. The fielding was, was excellent. Um, and clinical now again with the batting. Yeah, clinical they were indeed. And a well-deserved victory for Hollywood Bets uh, Dolphins over World Sports Betting Western Province. And uh, the crowds will, uh, the few that were there will be going back home quite disappointed tonight. But from Newlands, we uh, enjoyed uh, bringing these games to you as we just go through the scorecard once again. Kaya Zondo getting 35 off uh, 23 balls. Rulofsson ending up with 21 of 19. John John Smuts and Marcus Ackerman really doing well with the extras. Also quite a quite a number there. The bowling figures, Western Province. Not much to write home about. But uh, it's been a disappointing day at Newlands. Disappointing for Western Province. Disappointing for their fans. But they've got next weekend to try and redeem themselves. So, in conclusion, Hollywood bets victorious by eight wickets. And uh, from uh, Newlands, here in the Western Cape, good night for now.